everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this flying squirrel. And all I need is pencil and paper and eraser and this number five micron pin. It's going to be super easy and super fun. It will take a while though because there's lots of marks that we have to make, but it's worth it. Look how cute he is. Yay. Let's get started. First, we just have to sketch out our squirrel and pencil before we do the pen and ink. So um, I've got my zoomed in image of my flying squirrel on a tree. We're gonna leave out his buddy's little back and tail here, uh, but I love the tree and everything. And this time our paper is tall, so up and down, so tall, narrow. So normally we do the other direction, uh, but this one you can see because it goes with the paper up and down is better. Uh, so I've got my pencil and I'm going to make my marks at about the midpoints, right? So if this is an 8 by 10 piece of paper, then my midpoints are approximately at 4 inches and 5 inches. Um, so now we'll be ready to go. And the tree is a pretty good diagonal that will help us and you'll notice that it starts in the corner this is probably some like plant life on the tree or bark or something and then it doesn't stop in the corner it starts stops short of the corner so i'm going to start in this corner and i'm going to stop about here so i have more room on this side so i'm going to go very gently that way so now we have our tree um, and we can see that our tail from our squirrel is kind of about here and then his little hand is about here and then he's got his body and his face so those are our helping lines for where our squirrel will go and then all of this is just going to be bark and all of this is just going to be plant life. So we won't worry about that. We'll just work on getting the details of our cute little squirrel in here. So <clears throat> this feels right according to my space. So now I can add a little bit more lines for where his little face will go. Super cute. And we've got his muzzle. So he's got large eyes on either side of his muzzle. So it almost looks like uh, Mickey Mouse face inside of his head here. And so then we're going to have his little nose, mouth, um, the eyeballs inside. That seems good. And then we'll make this arm have little toes. So we're just going to bend them up, little fingers, where these guys can, these guys have good dexterity with their fingers. So we can go like that. And then there's the line for where the pigment is a little darker. And this happens to be a flying squirrel. So these little curvy lines are where his skin is kind of like tucked up now because he's not gliding out. Um, and so that represents the different skin. And then we have the inside part of the tail the outside part of the tail and then it comes to kind of a curvy end there and then you know I'm pretty pleased with my back but I'm gonna have a little bit more neck coming over to this so it just adjusts it slightly All right so that seems good now we're going to erase the x-ray vision this eraser is not so good um, going to erase x-ray vision where his arm goes in front of the tree branch and where his tail goes in front of the tree branch. So that is enough. Oh, and I guess there's 
the kind of the size of his ear there. Okay. All right. So that seems good. So just kind of look at that and try to figure out, okay, do you like your proportions? Does his eyes look cute enough? Maybe I need to go a little higher on this one. So he's not winking at me. Um, so if you get this basic part first, then you'll be ready to move on to the pen and ink next. Last month was the first time we did a pen and ink with a micron pen, and I encourage you to kind of play around and practice different marks. And so if you didn't get to do that last time, you know, it doesn't hurt to keep practicing and trying different things. So get your scrap paper out, do some practices, practice gentle, practice dark, you know, before we get started on the actual drawing. Now that we've practiced, I like to start with the cute face because it's such a cute face, right? So uh, we have our pencil line and let's just start up here with his little ear. So inside of his ear, we're gonna put a little floofy, so this is furry right here. And then this part is kind of the dark outline where our pencil was. And so this will be outline where pencil was. And then there's just little hairs kind of going in that direction towards his ear. Looks a little bit like a leaf. And then it's near to the center of the ear, it's going to be darker. So I'm just gonna do more scribbly stuff in there. So, all right, we've done our first thing. We have an ear and then we're gonna go like that. Okay, our eye. So we want there to be that highlight on the eye. So that's the circle I will not color inside of, okay? And then I'm gonna go inside this circle and color pretty darkly. So he's looking at me. Can leave a little bit of gaps for like some light hitting the edges. And I'm gonna do that on this one too. There we go, because we don't want scary eyes. Kinda color that up, leave a little empty spaces. Nice. <clears throat> All right, then the eyelid is close to his eye. So you got that kind of eyelashy kind of look there. Oh, that looks adorable. Okay, and then I'm gonna start here and do that on this eye. Oh yeah. And on this one, we can kind of see a couple more lashes there. So we'll do that on that side too. All right, very cute. Looks like it's gonna star in a Disney movie. All right, and then there's some furry bits kind of coming up from his little eyelid like that. And then there's white fur above his eye. So it kind of looks like an eyebrow. So we're gonna go over it, over it, over it like a candy cane, and I'm gonna go over it, over it, over it. Like a candy cane on that one too. All right, so this line that we have here, doo -doo -doo. so from here all the way to his forehead up here, we need lots and lots of, like it's like bubbles and soda. This is dark fur on the top of his head. So close together, dark, Fill that all in with that. So that looks quite dark and my head felt a little lopsided. So you can just add a little more black like this on any lopsided sides to kind of fill that in. And then I'm gonna get the ear on this side, which is a little bit furrier in this direction. So just kind of copy it like that and you know, fill it up with hairs going in different directions there. All right, so that is that ear facing us there. Okay, then under the eye is an eyelid. Under the eye eyelid, well, that was kind of fun. Okay, and then the nose is not colored in, so I gotta leave it hollow there, and we're gonna get his little mouth, and it goes all the way to that 
muzzle shape there. And then we're gonna go around the muzzle with little dashed lines, get a little shadow under his little chin down there. And little lines on his little muzzle going that way. And then we've got kind of, I don't know, do squirrels get bags under their eyes? But we've got like a hairy, hairy bags under his eyes. Maybe because he's, he's so hyper, he never sleeps. Maybe that's why. Okay, so it's not as dark as up there. And then we're just gonna do some little letter C's to kind of fill to there for the shadow side of his face. So there's a shadow side of his face. This stays pretty empty, so I'll just have a little hair marks there. But this triangle that we have here for the shoulder, that one gets to be quite dark as it goes up to this ear. So it does that. Line, 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 line. Okay, and then we'll put a little lines here where his head stops and his ear starts. And we'll do that over there too. All right, that looks pretty cute. Now, anytime, um, now's a good time, you can erase out the pencil parts. I erased out my pencil parts, and then I noticed that he needs like his little bottom lip there so that he can have more of a talking expression. So I'm gonna fill that in. Now it's got a little opening there, so you could just imagine him having a little conversation with you. I'm gonna do a little more shadows right there. All right, super cute. Make this a little pointier there. Now I'm going to move over to his fingers. So we have our sketchy lines for our fingers, but let's go ahead and make them a little longer. So I'm adding to the tip. Kind of looks like the Grinch who stole fingers. This is the Grinch who stole Christmas fingers because it comes to those little pointy um, lines there. And then we're just going to kind of follow this back all the way back to his little underarm right there. And this one, we're going to follow back to his little chin right there. And then we have this line. Well, this line is where it's definitely the darkest. Oh, he's got little dimples where his little fingers go back in. So little, little dimples there. And... Then we're gonna make this line very dark, but hairy dark. So I'm gonna go on it like that for this line. And it looks like, yep, I get to do this the whole way. There's the dark furry line going the whole way. And this is what I'm looking at at the picture here, right there. Uh, so you'll notice that there has this kind of like shoulder muscle area here. So we're just gonna kind of get that shoulder muscle in place. So it goes a little past this triangle and it's about there. So this will be that shoulder muscle. So back here is much darker than the shoulder muscle. So we're gonna do more kind of like what we did on the forehead right here. Maybe I'll do like some, some loopy-loos that overlap each other. A little bit controlled scribbling. All right. Yes, that's nice and dark. Good, good, good. Okay. And then here we can kind of lighten it up a little. So I'm going to do some controlled scribbling that's a little lighter. So I'm doing like cursive letter L's that overlay itself. Like they, they overlay each other. So... Uh, kind of makes me think of chain mail because I'm going in the direction of the, the little body. So that's the way the hair would grow. And I'm doing little narrow loopy loops that overlap each other. That way I can have those white dots in between for the light hitting the hair or the texture color of the hair. So for, so either way, it looks cool. So there it is all colored in and then I'm going to head back to the little arm and the arm we're just going to kind of do more marks that kind of follow because this is not going to be as dark so it's a little bit of 
um, crossing each other a little bit, overlapping, but we won't get it as dark. So you can practice on another piece of paper if you're not sure what will look the best. I think this looks pretty good. We're just going to keep going that way until we make it to the end of the shoulder. All right, that looks cool. All right, then we're gonna put a few little dots under his little chin. So we got little dots here. It represents it's a lighter color fur. And let's put some dots or some dashes under here to represent some lighter color fur. Do, 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 do. Lighter color. All right, now where his tummy touches the tree, that will be darker. So I'm just gonna come down here with like darker lines near to the tree. I'm kind of keeping a concave kind of feel here. Um, so that it's like his little tummy is pressed against the tree. All right, then we get to follow with some hairy lines that make it look like wrinkles. Make it like a little sharpe. Um, so this is the little wrinkly tummy that can be a glider so it's like skin that hangs out under his little arms so he can hold it out he can glide from tree to tree and look like he's flying just kind of put little lines little lines little lines little lines little lines all right so that looks good we don't want to overdo it because if we overdo it then it'll all just be one one furry mess so we want to have enough variations that you can tell where you've been okay um so next the tail so this is the center of the tail so some of the tail is going to be heading this direction and some of the tail is going to be headed that direction very much like um a feather or a leaf when you think about it so we got these are going this way Yep, this way, this way, this way. And we can't see where it's attached to his body because it's on the other side of the tree. So think of it as like a big feather, like a feather quill, like you would um, sign a wedding book or something. You got your big feather quill. So this is going this way, and this is going this way. And then this was closer together because it's darker under there. And then over here, this is where it changes directions. This pencil line that we put here is where it changes directions. This is all coming from this way, going that way. So this will be like this. Now that goes there. And then this is gonna go like this. You want to kind of stick out of that line a bit because, you know, their fur would stick out. You don't want it just be a straight line. Stick out there. And then all of this is gonna be heading in that direction. So first we're just gonna lay it in so we have our direction and then we can go back and decide what needs to be darker and what needs to be uh, left lighter. So. Kind of looks like uh, when the news has wind directions on the weather map. So we've got all the wind directions coming from here to there. All right, so that's the general direction of things. And now we get to make things darker from a shading standpoint. So here next to the center of the tail, it will be darker. So we're just gonna copy the direction that we started, but put more closer together. So those would be darker there. We don't have to keep going. Um, and then on this bottom part, we're gonna copy the direction going that way. 
put it darker there. There, good. And then when it goes across the edge, this part should be a little lighter. So under here is gonna be a little darker. I'm just gonna copy that under that pencil line that used to be there. I don't know if you've erased it already, but that creates that edge there. And I'm gonna create an edge there by putting the dark on that side, okay? So that was inside. This is the light edge of the tail going out here. Then this will be the dark edge over here. So we're gonna go under here and make this part darker. Holding my pen up, I'm pressing pretty firmly as I go, making pretty broad strokes and just kind of copying the direction that the other guys were going. This is not a project that you're gonna get done in like one minute, okay? This is just get in the groove, enjoy it. Like, yes, marks, 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 marks. This is for people who enjoy their time of sketching and drawing, because you will get to make lots and lots of little marks to build up this squirrel. Because even now, I feel like I could make it darker if I cross it a little more. So we're gonna cross it a little more. So instead of going exactly the same, I slightly change the direction so that it made like a woven design on that underside. And that will make it darker because they crisscross. It's called cross hatching. All right, and then I'm gonna put a few more longer lines to show that this tail is curling that way. Nice. All right, so that looks like a pretty good tail to me. So our squirrel looks pretty cute. Let's pay attention to our tree now so that we can get more of that in. Uh, so our tree, we have, remember our line started here and went to there, um, but we don't wanna just follow the, the line. So first we're gonna put, I don't know if that's fungus growing there or leaves, but we're gonna get that kind of bumpiness up there and then kind of make this line not as straight. So it's got sections of our tree as it comes. Cause you know, trees have bark. Um, and then when we think of tree, we don't want it to be like a flat board. So let's just go ahead and put a nice curvy thing happening here. So have that feeling of the tree is round. It's not, notice I'm going off my page a little bit. We don't have a flat board on our tree, so it's wide, wide, wide. And then our bark is going to be peeled open over here. So I'm gonna put in kind of like this kind of thing. So our bark peels open. So that's the space inside. I probably should have put that lower than a tree, but oh well, now I have it there. So this is just inspiration anyway, so we can always change it. And cross that team that way. And all right. So that's gonna be a good base for a tree. I kind of like this gap opening, so maybe I will open another gap. So it's like a paper birch kind of tree. So I'm gonna add another gap there on our paper birch. And then I can color inside my gaps. Um, so don't be afraid to scribble because that looks interesting. And it helps you with your spaces. Okay, so then we're gonna have A little more shadow created by the squirrel's body, right? So it's gonna be a little darker there. And gonna do some cross hatching kind of things there. And look at that a little darker here. So 
a really bumpy fungus toadstools or something. I don't know. Is that that there and then again I left out the other squirrel. I will I will tell you the book. So um I don't think it exists. I think it's out of print, but <clears throat> that you can find similar etchings that are public domain kinds of things because it's a good way to get practice with black and white things is to start with a black and white thing. All right, so I've had mostly curvy, but it's kind of straight. So now I'm just gonna put some random like doctor's signatures over here. Because that looks good. I'm gonna use these little bark thingies. So kind of like staples on the edges. pretty good okay so now we're gonna get our little leaves and branches up here so let's just kind of start with our branches and then these leaves remind me of ivy a little bit because they're kind of bending in the space that's fun okay and then can see I'm not trying to copy it exactly. We just want to have leaves. And it looks like in our reference here that the leaves all have diagonals going that way to differentiate them. So uh, we'll just kind of lay in some branches coming. They're like hanging down from a branch above, I think is the idea. And they kind of come to a point and then all the angles go that way. So just keep filling it up with branches and leaves and then little diagonals. We don't want this part to get very dark. Those are all my leaves that I put in. And then you'll notice that there's still some kind of like diamond shaped cross hatching back there to show that he's like in a canopy of a tree. Um, so if you want, you can do that. Um, but notice that not a lot of pressure because we don't want it to take away from the squirrel and get to be too noisy. So I'm going to go this way with little lines and then just kind of across. And that's just a way to fill up the white paper so it doesn't read so white. Okay, so now we've been everywhere and now it's just a matter of like, okay, does something need to stand out more? Do you need a little more shadowing there? So just kind of get your fine tunings to help something be separate from something else. And maybe I'll make his tail a little fluffier by coming out a little more like that. And like that. Okay, so that's a nice fluffy tail. And now I'm gonna go back to the very first thing I did, which is his ear, and I'm gonna get a little more shadow in there. And get a little fur sticking around his little face and make it go down to his little chest. And now that I've got all this other color, I want his arm to stand out a little more. So I'm gonna make it a little darker just right there so I can see his arm a little better. 
So this is the part that can take a long time because you're like, hmm, maybe I need a little darker there on that triangle. See, so this is when stuff like that happens. A little darker on the side of his little neck there. Cute. Okay, and then I can go a little darker here. And a little darker there. To make him have little fur sticking out of his back. Some more fur. Fur, 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 fur. Fur on his back now. There we go. All right, and then you can just decide a little darker on the tree next to the white tummy so that the white tummy stands out. Some more cross hatching there. Because it's next to the light color makes the light color show up better lighter if I do the darker shadow next to it. Maybe a few more little freckles. I'm giving them freckles. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Freckles above his nose. All right. And then you can just sign it. It can be a clever signature. Kind of hide it on the tree. But it's just my sign right here. And then take your tape off. I'm going to date it too. Just like that.